Hi, here is Arndt from Königsmark again. And uh, again, I would like to talk a little bit about the new plugin People in Motion Release 2. And this time about the inverse kinematic system that is uh, already built in. Actually, there are two different kinds of um, systems. One is more static like, and the other one is more dynamic like, similar to what you already might know from the uh, character menu in uh, Cinema 4D. So let's have a look. I'm uh, loading character again. This time I'm picking one of the Axis Design characters I bought in their shop. They're already rigged, so again we can use them right away with the People Motion plugin. Just get it from Plugins menu, the People Motion controller, head over to the basic settings, uh, spot the hips joints and link this to the hips links field. Choose in this case Axis Design load the character, constrain it, and then we are already ready to go, basically. So we can switch over to animate. You can see the character uh, is in the idle pose already, and we can head over to the motion designer to um, tweak the um, walking animation. So for this I'm uh, activating walk in place again, and then we can simply smooth shift through all the different walking speeds we have. So this is the default walk, of course. Uh, we already have been to the walk parameters we have here to adjust the kind of walk, the um, um, shifting of the joints um, and all the dynamic animations we have. Uh, beside that, we also have a part about the static um, moves and positions, and this is sort of an inverse kinematic system that's um, more static. Uh, and it starts with these uh, offset values you can find in the second half of the page. So here you can basically adjust um, the position and rotation of all the uh, joints we have inside the rig. And uh, as you can see, this doesn't, uh, or this overlays, better to say, this overlays the walking animation. So you can basically adjust this to anything you like in any awkward fashion you like to have this. And you can see you can adjust the hip parameters. I've always seen this. You even can stretch uh, different kinds of uh, joint positions or what's more useful is the, the uh, rotation and uh, we have this head position which is um, defined uh, for running and uh, while uh, holding a mobile phone that's why we don't see any effect here but we have the target position for the hat, just in case uh, if you don't want to use any external objects. Um, that's why I call this a static inverse kinematic system. So this moves with the character, so to say. Um, of course, the shoulders can be offset and the elbows can be offset. So if you like to have some more to the back or more to the front or whatever like this. Wrist, of course, for the hand positions, wrist orientation, hand orientation, uh, the static and moving feet, so of course you can adjust the feet parameters here as well. I like uh, to have more of a uh, walk along a line kind of walk foot directions and uh, tiptoeing. It's all can be found here uh, with this um, static system. So I'm just resetting this to the default. You simply just uh, reset this all to zero, basically, so you get more or less the default walk. Or maybe the, uh, here we go. The orientation of the wrists is maybe a little bit 
off here. Should have remembered the original parameters here. Something like this, maybe. So this is uh, the static IK system. And um, beside that, we have an external IK system as well. So this is more uh, a dynamic system. So you just create IK objects for this. You can see they are grouped below the film controller here by default. Um, and they work similar to what you might know from the Maxon inverse kinematic system. So you have a strength slider with all these objects. And you can, as you can see, adjust the position of all the body parts individually, if you like to. Or in the case of the arm, it uh, most of the time makes sense to adjust the strength for the uh, elbow part as well. So that's why I'm uh, including this option here to drive both strength values here at the same time. So it's a more fluent transition between the original animation and the IK animation. Uh, then of course uh, you can do anything you are used to with the default cinema IK system as well. So you just can grab them, rotate them to adjust uh, position and rotation values. Uh, in case of the hands, um, there are some additional controls, as you can see here below. Uh, of course, about the hand orientation in total, but then again, also for the fingers, which are already included in this IK controller. So you can adjust the bending of all the fingers here if your uh, character rig includes uh, a finger rig as well. Something like this. So this is also included. Um, something I thought about is um, about the moving character. In this case, the character is just moving in place, so it's easy to use the IK system. But um, normally, of course, you would uh, deactivate the walk in place and the character will move. So you can see that in this case, the right hand and right arm are stretched out to keep the original position of the inverse kinematic objects. So this is uh, something a little bit um, to consider uh, because normally you would have to animate these um, external objects with the character. So that's why I'm including this absolute option here. So if you tick this off for let's say the elbow part and the right hand part, you can see that now the um, objects, the IK objects, stay at their same position as before, but the hand will keep this original orientation and position without having to move around the controllers. But still the IK works. So uh, I think it's quite handy to do a more complex animations while the character is moving. So you don't have to um, take care about the additional position and uh, orientation or, um, animation of the inverse kinematic object. So just unticking the absolute option for this. And another nice feature I think is that you can um, decide what kind of parameter you actually li like to drive with the inverse kinematic object. So you can split this between the position and the rotation. So. Let's say uh, we're using the hip to control the um, hip movement here. You can see that this is uh, total control of the hip, so there's no longer a rotation and position change for the hip. So You can decide to keep the uh, original rotation. For instance, if you untick include rotation, you can see that the hip now still rotates but keeps the position of the uh, external IK object. So that might be handy as well. If you just like to adjust a little bit, of course you can do this the other way around as well. So for instance, if you like to have specific tilted hip all of the time. 
but you still want the hip to move up and down or something like that. So both combinations are possible and they, I think both make sense from time to time. That's why I'm including this. So that's basically um, the functionality of the inverse kinematic systems we have inside people in motion release too. So the static one and the dynamic one with the external objects.